Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. My name is Dylan and today we're going to be doing another color grading tutorial. It's raining outside so I thought we would chill back and do something that was requested by someone named Bass Player Available and it is just a very simple grade, couple step grade that gets you a little more than just a balanced look. It has a little bit of style to it. So this is very beginner friendly, very easy and very quick to do. I think you guys will find it useful. Okay, so this was shot on the Sony a7S III in 422 10-bit in the Color Profile S-Log. And if you guys want to follow along with me, I put this clip in a link in the description so you guys can easily download that for free. All it costs is your soul. Kidding. I don't want your souls. So the first thing you want to do with log footage is convert it to a Rec 709 color space. And if you remember, all that means is adding contrast and saturation back into the image, which we can do with our color wheels or by adding a LUT that is specific to the camera that we shoot with. So a lot of these LUTs you can find on the camera manufacturer website and you can download for free. For example, this is Sony's S-Log to Rec 709, but, uh, if you're shooting on, I don't know, Canon or Panasonic, you can find LUTs, I believe, that, that, are, that are free that convert your footage to Rec. 709. But if you are not shooting in log footage, you can skip this step. However, I recommend that you shoot in log footage because it allows you to keep the most dynamic range in your shot as possible. So it allows you to keep the detail in the very brightest parts of your image and the very darkest parts, even if it is a uh, say a, a very bright day and you have shadows in the corner, it will allow you to keep the detail in both of those exposure values, or at least better than most other profiles. And it gives you flexibility in post to push around. So after converting your log footage to a Rec. 709 color space, we'll add a bit more contrast and saturation into our image. So go to your color wheels and open up your scopes by pressing Command 7. And you'll notice if you look at this Luma waveform, our shot is sitting pretty low on the waveform. Generally, a well-exposed shot is going to start off in the middle. And here, everything is just pushed quite low. So what I'll do is go over to the global exposure slider, which will adjust everything, the entire uh, image's exposure. And I'm going to push this up so it's a little bit more center. That's good. And then I'm going to start adding my contrast. So I'll go to my shadow exposure slider and I'm going to bring this down, not go below zero because then I am taking out detail in my image. If I go below zero, then you're losing uh, some detail in parts of the shot. So I'm going to go right about there. And I'm actually going to leave my highlights right here just because I don't want it to be too contrasty, especially because this feels like very documentary filmic. And uh, it's not like a commercial look. A commercial look would have more contrast if like pushing up the highlights here. But I kind of want something that's a little bit muted. And oftentimes in film, you'll see this. You'll see a lot of uh, films where the highlights are sitting really low. And so I kind of want to keep that here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of saturation back into my image. And so we have just made our image pop a little bit more. We added a little bit more contrast and saturation. And the next step is to color balance our shot. Our shot is pretty color balanced as is, but it still needs some minor tweaking. And we can tell this by going to the RGB overlay and just noticing that, especially in this area, there is a lot of red that is separated from the rest of the color. This shouldn't be fully white, so it shouldn't be fully connected because this was shot around sunset, so everything is a little warmer, but it should be closer to this. So I'm gonna to go to my red curve and pull down on the center here, which is just taking out the red in my image. It's just pulling out some red, starting from the midtones. You'll see this is the midtones. You have the shadows down here and the highlights up at the top. So if I turn that off and on, just look at, especially over here on the RGB overlay, look at how much that converges those colors. It brings them closer together, which is just balancing our colors. It's just color correcting our shot. And actually, that's pretty much all I need to do. It's looking, it looks really good as is. Maybe I'll take out a little bit of green here, maybe add a bit of blue, and that's fine. Really easy. Just looking at your RGB overlay, seeing if the colors are really, are not connected, and trying to fit them a little bit closer together. But keeping in mind, like what time of day did you shoot at, etc. And I'm gonna actually make a slight S curve and bring up her skin a little bit by going to kind of the midtones on the higher end 
and then pulling down in the shadows to give it just a little bit more oomph. And that gives it a little bit more contrast there. So that was our color correction right there. It made everything, it made the colors a little bit closer together, balanced our shot, and then we, uh, we added a little bit of contrast to make it look a little bit more natural, but a little bit closer to what we want as the end result. So we converted to a Rec. 709 color space, we added contrast and saturation, and we color balanced our shot. Next, we will start with our look. So add another color curves, and if you watched the last episode I did in this series, I talked about a process called the cross-process look, and it was an old film technique. Essentially, what you're gonna do for in the digital age is you're going to add a bit more sh uh, blue in the shadows by pulling up on this point here. This is the shadows, midtones, and highlights, and decreasing the amount of blue in the highlights. And then you're gonna do the same on the red curve, except flip it. So I'm gonna decrease the amount of red in the shadows. I am going to increase the amount of red in the highlights here. And then you can adjust the green to your liking, but I actually like where it's sitting right there and I'm even going to make this a little bit contrastier. And so you'll see that just gives it a little bit of a look. We have complementary colors going on. We have her skin, which is orange, which is the primary color, and that's helping it pop with this kind of blue background. Now we can clean this up a lot more, and this is where your footage can become more professional looking, for lack of a better term. If you go to hue versus saturation curves and go to luma versus sat, we can take out the saturation, which is the intensity of color in different brightness values, different exposure values. That's what Luma is. So click this uh, picker right here, and I'm gonna select the very dark part of the image, which is her hair, and I'm going to decrease the saturation by lowering this here and making a slight curve. You wanna have this anchor point so it doesn't affect the saturation of the whole, the rest of the image but right about there looks really good. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the highlights. Something I'm gonna bring up is my range check, which will check if my shot is overexposed or underexposed, or my highlights or shadows are overly saturated. And if I look right here, this is just a tad, just a bit overly saturated. So let me select this. Um, wow, it's very, it's not that bright. Oh, that's because we didn't bring our highlights up. But that's all I need to do, just a slight curve down. And that looks pretty good. So if we turn that off and on, and you look at her hair especially, it goes from kind of a gross blue and just brings it to a more natural tone while keeping this, which lies in the midtones. It keeps this very blue, very vibrant. It helps to pop. Not vibrant, but it helps to have her skin pop a lot more. And that's the look, guys. If I turn this off and on, this is a very, very quick grade that you can do. So let's go over what we did. We added a LUT to a normalization LUT to convert this to Rec. 709. Then we adjusted the contrast and saturation. We color balanced our shot. We added our look by adding a little bit more blue into our shadows and a little bit more red into our highlights. And then we went into our hue saturation curves and cleaned up our image by taking out some of the saturation in the darkest parts and the brightest parts. The last step we could take just to make sure that we're all good is to make sure her skin is the right exposure and the right color. So exposure, we already checked. She's looking good right in here. And if we look at our skin tone line on the vector scope, our skin is right about here. We could use a draw mask to isolate her skin to make sure it's uh, correct, but we can see it's right here. It's this thing, it's pushing a little red, but overall it's, uh, overall it's fine. Now, if this is not enough for you, if you wanna do more, if you have time for a little bit more, let me just show you some minor tweaks that you can do. And this is something that I touched on in my other videos, is kind of being a, a cinematographer behind the camera and shaping light just with, uh, just with what you have in the editing software. And I guess you could say shaping light with shape masks. So I like to open up a color board because then I know uh, that the color board in the list is the shape mask, even though it shows right here. But so I'm gonna make an oval shape mask over her. I'm gonna click outside and just decrease just a little bit the highlights and maybe a little bit in the midtones. And on the inside, if I open up my Luma waveform and look at her skin, her skin actually is lying in a good range. Generally, skin should lie anywhere from 40 
to 70 IRE, depending on your complexion. And she's just fine. I could maybe even raise her a little bit. But just notice how much this makes her pop. Let me, do, let me get rid of this, these lines here. And look at how much that just makes her a focus. And it is easy to tell. You can kind of see where that outline is. But if you were just looking at the shot, you would have, you would have no idea that we just made that. And they do it a lot in, in, uh, in films. I could make the feather a little bit larger so it's not as prominent. So that line isn't as prominent. Not a very stable shot, but I can stabilize it in post but you get the point. So that looks a lot better. It makes her pop a lot more, doesn't it? And then you can add one more thing. If you guys still have the time, this is kind of a, a fake halation effect, uh, which is basically a, a fake pro mist effect. So if I duplicate the clip by pressing option and dragging up, it makes a copy of the clip. Add a luma keyer onto this one. You're gonna press this middle button you're going to drag this shadow slider until you select the brightest parts of your image. So not too much is bright here, just about right there. And then you're going to add a Gaussian blur on top of this top shot. So I'll go to Gaussian blur. I'll double click here. And then I'm going to select this very far left one on the Luma keyer and I can adjust my brightness. Do you see how that kind of makes a kind of a glow effect here? I can even add a slight boost and I'm just going to do right about there. Boom. Turn that off and on. And it just helps to make those edges a little bit softer, a little bit more, dare I say, cinematic, a little bit more filmic. <clears throat> looks a little bit better. I actually may do a little bit less. The last thing I'm going to do is add a bit of film grain to this shot because I think this shot deserves it. And you can download this uh, film grain in the link in the description. So once you drag it on, I'm going to change this to overlay and I'm going to adjust the opacity to taste. So I like it. Uh, I think I like it right about there. And I'm going to duplicate this by holding option and dragging. And then that duplicates over top and I can trim it by pressing option right bracket. And uh, why did that not work? There we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this simple grade. It's just a few steps. You can save it as a preset. And from there, if you want to add some film grain or some halation or adjust the colors a little bit, you can. It makes it much easier to do so. If you guys don't know how to save your effects or your color grades, I will put a link to a tutorial that I made in the description. As always, I more than appreciate it if you guys press the thumbs up button or if you leave a comment below. Even comments just like great video help to progress and push the video forward. So hopefully I will see you guys next week. Have a great week yourself.